In this video, you'll learn how to use ActiveCampaign custom fields to store information about your contacts. I'm Jason, growth specialist at Wildmail, where we help make ActiveCampaign even better for your base businesses. Let's check them out. Before I show you how to create and use ActiveCampaign custom fields, let's talk about what they are. So ActiveCampaign custom fields are used to store unique information about a contact, like their first name, last name, their birth date, uh, that may be updated in the future. So things like their email, their industry type, a webinar date for a webinar they've registered for. And you can use this information to personalize future emails using personalization tags. Okay, and if you're not sure what those are, you can check out this video here to learn more about how to use custom fields in dynamic conditional content in your email campaigns. Now, these custom fields are going to be filled in with data that you collect using active campaign forms or from a third party integration. And there is a difference between contact fields, which we'll go over in this video, and deal fields. And you can check out another video that we have for that in our marketing automation playlist. So now let's go over how to create custom contact fields. First, we're going to go to contacts and to fields. So I'll go over here, contacts. And I'll go down to fields. And you'll see add a field here in the top right. You also see add a group. And this is a great optional step beforehand that you can use to organize your custom fields uh, using groups. So here's a test account, and you'll see here general details. We have a general details group, UTM group, and a Stripe group for our custom fields. If not, you'd have one long running list of custom fields. Uh, it can get a bit messy, so I would definitely suggest using groups here in order to organize your custom user fields. But we're going to go to add a field. And from here, you're going to give the field a name. So let's say webinar date. You're going to select the group from the groups that you just chose. So we'll just choose general details for this one. Uh, but maybe you have a group for webinar details. So this could be their unique link to access the webinar. It could be their webinar date, et cetera. Now here, this is super important, the field type. And I'm going to go through each of the different types that you'll see here. First we've got the text input. This is your traditional, typical uh, text input field that will allow you to add data like someone's name, uh, last name, industry type, business name, etc. into this field. So if I choose text input and then click add, it'll create a text field. Then I can go down to text area. This will be the same exact thing, but it'll give me more characters uh, to use so I can add more text. It's going to be medium to long form text to store. Next up, we have a date. And this will allow you to capture a date in this format here uh, with the additional option to add a timestamp if I choose the date time field type. Okay, This can be great for when someone completed an action, when someone registered, when someone uh, became a subscriber to a list, uh, when someone became a member, etc. Next up, we've got the drop down menu. This is a standard drop down menu that looks like this. This here is actually a drop down menu. So I click this, it drops down. Uh, but when I click into this, you'll notice that I have three options and I can add additional options. So the drop down menu uh, allows you to set predetermined response choices for the contacts. And you're going to use the drop down menu field if you have about five or more options for contacts to choose from, because the choices aren't going to be presented all at once. It's a bit better visually for a contact to select from a drop down. You can use radio buttons, which I'll describe in one second, uh, for fewer than five options. And this would show up on your form like this with option one, two, and three for their responses. Then when someone selects one of these options, it's going to fill in this custom field with their selection. And they're only able to choose uh, one from the dropdown. Next up, we've got a list box. This is a multi-selection list. It's kind of a combination of a drop-down menu and a checkbox field type. So uh, you're going to be able to select more than one of the drop-down options. So you can fill these in, and a contact would see these different options, and they can go ahead and select multiple if they want uh, instead of just one. And then it will fill in those responses into the custom field separated typically by commas or by uh, the vertical lines. Next up, we have radio buttons. 
This is going to present predetermined response choices in a list all at once versus in a drop down menu. Uh, and they can only select one option, one choice uh, for their response. Now, this is going to be best again for fewer than five choices. If you have more than five, it, it gets overwhelming. It's um, it's not the best visual presentation. If you have more than five options, um, you have this kind of long uh, form that gets created and they have to sift through all of the different choices, whereas a drop down will allow them to scroll. Um, and then finally, we have check boxes. Again, you'll be able to present predetermined responses uh, all at once, and the contacts can check multiple boxes at once. So I'll show you that. Here is the uh, radio button option. Here is the checkbox option, and you'll fill in your different uh, choices there. The last one is hidden field, and we have a video on how to use hidden field right up here to prevent bots and pass UTM parameters. So I will choose webinar date. We'll just select the date field type and hit add. And now this has been created and I can scroll down webinar date. This here can be used for your personalization tags. We have another video on that here. This will allow you to use this date in your email communication with this contact, fill in uh, dynamic conditional content for that contact. And you can edit. Over here on the right, you can edit the field name, the personalization tag, the group that it's in, and give it a default value. This is super helpful for fields like name, for example, where if someone doesn't fill in their name, uh, you can fill it in with there, and then it would say, hey, there, instead of, hey, blank space. So quickly, I just wanted to share with you uh, what these look like when you have the custom fields showing up on a form. Uh, for full name, this is a text input field for email text input, it's actually its own special uh, field, but it would be text input deal owner here. We're showing this with a drop down. Checkbox example here, you can select multiple options in the form and they will all be filled in for this custom uh, field right here. List box example, you have a list, but in this case, you can select multiple options by holding shift. And those will all be stored in one custom field, the responses. You've got your webinar date, uh, date option. They could select that. And then the radio button example where you're only able to uh, choose one of the options that are presented. So let's quickly talk about when to use custom fields versus tags. Now tags are a fast, easy way to add information about a contact. Uh, regarding their actions, behavior, interest, or engagement. It's kind of like a snapshot of the customer journey. You're not going to use tags to personalize content in emails, etc. cetera. Um, it's good for triggering, automations, for segmentation, but custom fields can do everything that tags do as well. Plus, they're going to provide a bit more information uh, on the customer journey for that contact. So it's best for storing data about a contact, uh, that can be used in campaigns and that may be updated in the future, like their email address, uh, order numbers, dates, etc. And if I go into the fields page for contacts and I go to add a field, you can actually take this helpful quiz and it says fields store information about your contacts. So do tags. Not sure which is the better fit. Depends on how you want to use your, in, uh, your information. So do you want this info to appear within an email to personalize it? That best matches a custom field because you can use personalization tags. Is this unique contact info, like a name, date, or a phone number that you might need to update? Again, that's best for a custom user field. Uh, and does this info describe an action, interest, or behavior, like a product purchased, web page visited, or survey completed of your contacts? That can be done with a tag. Uh, of course, you know there may be specific details about that product purchase, like the product number. You would store that with a custom field. Um, but this quiz can kind of help you. Uh, you can select the answers and then hit continue, and it'll tell you whether or not you know, the, the platform feels it should be a tag or a custom field. If you have any questions about how to create custom fields uh, for contacts in Active Campaign, or whether you should be creating uh, something for a field or a tag, just drop them in the comments below and we'd be happy to help you out with that.